In this video, I'm going to show you triggering audio cues for live shows in Reaper. Now the concept of this video is let's say you're doing a live performance and you want to trigger certain sounds to go along with the performance. In my situation, I'm creating a project to go along with a play. We have certain sound effects or background music to go along with the performance. So I want to trigger it in Reaper. And I should also mention, I have another video I did recently showing you how to do this with a MIDI keyboard, triggering the sounds with different MIDI notes. But in this video, we're going to do it right from the project, triggering it directly with our computer. So let's take a look at my hard drive. I have a bunch of sound effects or background music all put in this folder. So I'm starting off with a blank project. I'm going to select all these sounds and just drag them in to that project like this. Drag and drop them. A Reaper asks us if we want to put them on separate tracks or one track. I'm going to put them on separate tracks to give me the flexibility of adding effects to them or adjusting their volume. So I'll choose separate tracks and it looks like this, with each sound all starting at the beginning of the project. Now to trigger them, we could solo each track like this and hit play to hear each sound one at a time. But what I prefer to do is trigger them by soloing each item. And we could do this a lot easier by creating a custom action. So let's go up here to Actions, Show Action List, and we're going to search in the filter for Select Item under Mouse. And there's an action right here that's going to select our item under the mouse cursor. We'll select it and go down here to New Action and choose New Custom Action which creates a custom action over here where we could list multiple actions and trigger them all together. I'm going to give it a name and we're going to add more actions to the list. Search in the filter for solo exclusive. And right over here is an action that's going to exclusively solo our items. We'll choose this next. So what's going to happen is it's going to select our item under the mouse cursor and then solo exclusively that item. Then we want to move our cursor to the beginning of that item. So when we hit play, it's going to start from the beginning. So we'll choose in our filter, move cursor, start. And right over here, we can move the cursor to the start of our item. Again, we'll put it at the end. And now we're going to save this custom action. We'll clear our filter, and we can see the action right here. There's a few different ways we could trigger it, but let's start off by using a keyboard shortcut. Right here, I'm going to use Control S, but of course, you can use any keyboard shortcut you prefer. So now, if I put my cursor on an item, hit that keyboard shortcut, it solos just that item. So I can hit play to trigger it. And we can do that with any item we want. But notice, we still have to hit play afterwards. And we have to use a keyboard shortcut each time. I don't find this to be the best way of doing this. So instead, let's use a mouse modifier. We'll go up here to Options, and down here to Preferences. Then we'll scroll down to Mouse Modifiers, and make sure the context is Media Items, left click. Then we could choose or replace any mouse modifier we have. We could even use the default action that doesn't require a modifier. But I'm going to use the modifier down here, Control. Double click it, go down here to Action List, and we're going to choose the custom action we created, Custom Solo. Double click it. Now that action is assigned to that mouse modifier, as long as we hold down the Control modifier. But again, you can choose any modifier you want or no modifier. So now, instead of hitting a keyboard shortcut, I can just put my cursor over an item like this one, 
hold on the modifier and click on it. And that's going to exclusively solo that item. Then we can hit play to trigger that sound. Do it up here or down here. To trigger the sound effects or background music for a performance or the play in my situation. But we could also make this quicker and have it automatically play. Let's go back to our actions right over here. And let's edit that custom action. We're going to add play to the end of it. So it'll automatically play when we click the item. Right over here, transport play, drag it over. So now, if we put our cursor over an item, it's going to select it. It's going to exclusively solo it. It's going to move the play cursor to the beginning of it, and that's going to play it all in one action. So let's hit OK. And now, if I hold down the modifier, we can just click on any item, and it's going to play it. Very helpful and very quick for triggering our sounds. And because we put each sound on a different track, we can add effects to it, change the volume and pan to customize how each sample or background music is going to sound. But now we can just click on it, and it's going to play that sound. And you can still have multiple sounds on one track. We could duplicate this one over to here, maybe treat it different. Let's reverse it. And now I can click on this one to hear it normal. We'll click on this one to hear it in reverse. Now, one other way we could do this is use toolbar buttons. Let's right click up here, go to Customize Toolbar. And go down here to add, and let's add the custom solo action. Make sure it's down at the bottom. You can see it over here. Hit OK. Now over here, we have a custom solo button. So if we select an item, hit that button, it plays that sound. But where it's really useful is if we right-click the button. Notice how the button turns red, meaning our custom action will stay active. So now, even without a modifier, we can just click items, and they're automatically going to play. So if you only have one hand free, you can grab your mouse or trackpad and just click on an item. And just that item is going to play. And we can right click this button again to turn off that feature. But put it back on when we're ready to trigger our sounds. So that's pretty much it. That's triggering audio cues for live shows in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.